to the case of the missing misses. I'm always excited for the start of a new day in room 26, but the next morning I could hardly wait to hear Mrs. Brisbane read more about Sherlock Holmes. I waited for the key to turn in the door and for Mrs. Brisbane to bustle into the classroom. I waited for the bell to ring and for my friends to arrive. I waited and waited and waited some more. In fact, I waited so long the bell rang but nobody came in. I knew it wasn't Saturday. I never spend Saturdays at school because I go home with one of my classmates on the weekends. Sometimes I go home with Mrs. Brisbane. Either way, I have a hamsterific good time. Og usually stays in room 26 on the weekends, which must be lonely for him. Poor frog. Og, something's wrong, I squeaked loudly to my neighbor. Boing, 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 he replied. He sounded as worried as I was. I could see some of my friends' faces looking through the window in the door. Humphrey, let us in, I heard Simon's muffled voice calling. It was the only time in my life I wished I wasn't a hamster so I could be big enough to open that door. Long after the bell rang, I finally heard some jiggling and joggling, and the door swung open at last. But Mrs. Brisbane wasn't the human opening the door. It was our principal, Mr. Morales. Behind him were my fellow students. Come on in, boys and girls, he said. Mr. A Mr. Morales is the most important person at Longfellow School because he's in charge of everything. He was wearing a tie with tiny little question marks all over it. He has a lots of interesting ties. Take your seats, he said. My fellow students were worried too. I could tell because they were quieter than usual. I guess that was a clue. It looks as if Mrs. Brisbane is going to be late, he said. We're trying to reach her now. Mrs. Brisbane is never, never, never late. This was a very pie-whacking morning. I'll take attendance, Mr. Morales said. Holly jumped up and offered help. Thank you, he said to her, but I think I can handle it. Then he called out names and each student answered, present, in return. Everyone was present except Mrs. Brisbane. Mr. Morales looked uneasy. So what do you usually do first in the morning? Helpful Holly raised her hand. We had homework last night, she said. I can collect it. Thank you, Mr. Morales said. Holly went up and down the aisles collecting the homework. How I wished I could get a look at those five mystery words. Everybody turned in, ho in a homework sheet except for one person, forgetful Phoebe. When Holly passed by her table, Phoebe blushed and said, oh no, I forgot it. I'll bring it tomorrow. As helpful as Holly is, she sometimes gets carried away. That's when I call her too helpful Holly. She frowned and said, you were supposed to bring it today. Mr. Morales stepped forward. It's okay, Holly. We'll straighten things out when Mrs. Brisbane gets here, he said. Whew, I was glad, glad, glad to hear him say that Mrs. Brisbane was coming. Just then, the phone in the classroom rang. Mr. Morales said, oh, and then, I see. And finally, very well. Well, my classmates were completely quiet. Mr. Morales hung up the phone. Boys and girls, Mrs. Brisbane won't be here today, he said. A substitute is on the way to take care of the class. The last time I had a substitute was when Mrs. Mack was here. I, but I didn't know she was a substitute because I didn't know much about school when I first arrived. I've certainly learned a lot since then. Mr. Morales seemed a little confused about what to do next, and he kept looking at his watch. Read to us from the Red-Headed League, I squeaked loudly. My classmates all giggled when they heard me. Mr. Morales walked over to my cage. Oh, so you want to take over the class, Humphrey, he said. I jumped on my wheel and spun it fast. Maybe Humphrey thinks we should do some exercise, Mr. Morales said. That made my classmates giggle even more. Rosie made her wheelchair, wheelchair spin in a circle. I love to spin too, she said, and everybody laughed. Just then, the door to the classroom opened, and a young man rushed into the room. The first thing I noticed about him was his red hair. I think Sherlock Holmes would have noticed that too. I also saw that he was wearing round glasses, and on his shirt was a big button with writing on it that said, Give Peas a Chance. I love any veggies, including peas, so this human and I definitely had something in common. He had a big cloth bag slung over his shoulder, 
sort of like Santa Claus. It was lumpy and bumpy and way too big for a lunch bag. Mr. Morales stepped forward and shook his hand. Welcome, I'm the principal, he said. Hi, Mr. He said, Mr. Morales. Hi, the young man said, and Ed Annapolis. The principal turned to the class and said, here's your substitute for the day. I expect you to give him your full attention. That's where we'll stop for today. We'll pick it up tomorrow right in the middle of page 17. Can't wait to find out what type of teacher Mr. Edinopolis is.